do we have Hi. do we have also Zina? Yes. Yes. So we are here and that means it's starting. Welcome back to the White Room. Today is Easter Monday, 5th of April, and uh, Happy Resurrection, Mariah. <laughs> How was it? Thank you so much, Simon. <laughs> and uh, I will immediately say hello to Zina. Hi, Zina. Hi. Hi, hi, Yasha. Hello. I'm, I'm very, I'm very happy that you are here. Why you are here, we will maybe resolve later. All right. And this podcast is maybe about why we are here. <laughs> And, um, but, uh, yeah. Um, you asked me before, why is it so bright in my room? It's bright because it's snowing today. Uh, actually much. So we already had planted the first flowers on the balcony, but now <laughs> they're, they're under snow. And, um, um, Mariah, I thought that we that we start. Uh, I don't know how how do we start. I wanted to always say what this podcast is about. Go for it. Okay, so this podcast is about theater, and it was made. Maybe I can also say, I'm I'm. My name is Simon Simon Bronikowski. I live in Schwerte, in a very small town in the west of Germany, near Dortmund and near Cologne also, and I'm an actor in a theater company named Studio 7 and one year ago we made this podcast together with Mariah uh, as a response of course to the pandemic but in my mind the idea was always before already there because I like podcasts very much and uh, because it's a good excuse for me to talk to people that I like. Um, I could to talk and talk and yeah, talk. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> and, to, and I could also just call the people that I like and ask them how they are. But maybe, yeah, you know, it's why should they? Why? You always need some kind of reason. Mm -hmm. And this is a good reason to call people and talk with them. And um, at the same time, I think that it also became a podcast not about theater only. In my mind, it became becomes also because it's happening in the internet it also is becoming some kind of reflection on how to deal with with uh, as theater people but also as consumers maybe or also as people to to deal with uh, the digital tools that there are and that are developing rapidly and are shaping our future and of course also about strategies how to do performance these days how to perform in these uh, times of where we cannot be together. I loved how you said it uh, once, Simon, what what can we do when we cannot do? And uh, I very much like it because it's so uh, paradoxical and open. Yeah. What can we do when we cannot do? Yeah, and this was the motto of this. And we said, uh, at least we can talk about things that we like. And, so, and this podcast is also deeply personal. So it is... Uh, very much we don't care what is the what is let's say the discourse in the moment uh, but we or maybe yes it depends uh, what is happening and um, we just go for it for to talk about what we like and i today of course we have yasha and zina with us we will talk about networking about networks because they created a very interesting network um but uh, before that i wanted to um spill some water into the wine of the because I, i want to do some coronavirus update and i wanted to spill some water into the wine of the of the testing strategy we, we in the last or we are wondering how can we do performances how can we do live events this year this year And uh, of course, our, at least in Germany, our, our, the poli politicians seem to be hoping 
that somehow we get through the next months in whatever way until the vaccine is finally there for everybody so they don't have other strategies than than um and we or other people thought yeah broad testing can also be a strategy you know rapid testing and also pcr testing so rapid testing the antigen testing and also the 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 good test the pcr test which tests any virus that you have any coronavirus sars cov2 and could we do could we imagine like events for instance we as studio 7 theater we have also a bar where we last year made a very successful small scale summer program with uh, concerts basically can we make concerts or parties small parties outside for 50 people maybe or 100 with uh, everybody testing themselves before that and uh, on top of that, we also have now directly at the side of our theater and of our bar uh, one of these testing centers, one of these containers that they put up. It's uh, I think they are popping up everywhere because uh, you can also make some good money with it. Um, uh, so it's uh, some kind of company from Hamburg, and uh, they are. Uh, it's of course very good, but. Uh, <laughs> um, they um the mayor was asking our 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 um the owners of the property here if they could do it here and so we have now uh, this this container where you can go for your for your rapid testing we in at the moment in germany we everybody every german citizen i think it's only german citizens or is it also like people without citizenship ship in germany germany do you know that any any german citizen ca hmm? That's a good question. Who actually is a burger for this burger test? I just look it up. <laughs> yeah. So every German citizen is entitled to one free antigen test, rapid test, per week. And so you can go there to these containers or to any other center and get a test. And this was the question. Do you know the answer? Every German citizen or I think also? No, you have to have a German uh, health insurance. Ah, yeah. So you don't have to be a citizen, but uh, yeah, yeah. In a way, you have to to live here. You have to have in your ID. There have to be a has to be um, an address, a German address. So I don't know what about what's about people with uh, like refugees without. Uh, it should be possible if they have. Um, they have insurance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Okay. Basically, this is the system. And so the question was, can we do events with that? And um, it's a very good idea. And there is even a very big festival, the Fusion Festival, which takes place uh, in eastern Germany in a small town where they have bought an, a big airfield. I think, I don't know what kind of airfield it was. And there they made uh, this festival Fusion every year. It was 70,000 people, I think. Always a uh, limited to 70,000 people. It was a very festival, non-profit festival. And they, uh, sometime, some weeks ago, uh, published their, their testing strategy, what they want to do to make this festival with 35,000 people happen. Yeah. And so what is their strategy is basically a combination of, of wild testing of everybody. Uh, so you, you can only, and not only rapid testing, but also the PCR testing. So you basically have to have make a PCR test right before entering the the um, the the event, and this is uh, with an organization that is crazy but really good man uh, well managed, and only people that have PCR negative can go onto the festival uh, itself. On the festival itself, which takes some days, I don't know how ma how many, they are going to be tested again. Everybody has to go out and get test again, PCR test, and if they're negative, they can come back in and continue with the festival. And like this and like this. And this is the good idea, no? It's a really sound idea. Um, but uh, I, there is an interesting thing because people are also trying that out. And I came uh, about a really interesting article by some by some tech guy. I don't know this guy, but he seems to be 
uh, active and has a company and uh, influential. And he made, a, he made an event where he did exactly this, but on a smaller scale. So uh, it, he's called Peter Diamandis. And I will put the link to his article in the show notes. It's called A False Sense of Security. Because he basically did all this event with a PCR test. So people had to, it was like, I don't know, 360 people or 300 people, I don't know, uh, that were present at some event. And they had tests before and during and also after. And I will make the long story short. All the people were tested negative throughout the whole event. And 25% afterwards be had co COVID contracted. So the tests were negative, but they had the, the, the disease. And only, I will make it very short, we can read it uh, maybe in this uh, article, um, also the, the person himself who organized it. What's interesting, there was one team that was also present. They also had the same test. This was the audiovisual studio team. They were, all the time, they were masks. No, And the, 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 how do you call that in English? FFP2 masks, so the good masks. And they had no, uh, no cases amongst this group. So uh, basically... Uh, the conclusion for me is test is good depends on how how high the numbers are in the in the country or in the region where you are because they have a 91 92 97 percent but some some can get through and they can cause some trouble afterwards but what really works are masks so what i was uh, this is the conclusion of this article and um, this is really so simple and so interesting that you just say yes it's good but really what works is masks so for instance when i was in september at the favoriten festival i made also an episode on that festival this was in dortmund a free theater independent theater festival we there was also a nice organization people went out on one side and then they came out on the other side very good but in the spec in the performances themselves people sat down and then they could take off their mask and i wonder why no i know i know why because it's unpleasant but actually why i think you could do theater performances indoors and you just should have these real good masks and you just need to leave them on and then then yes it could be really 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 secure and possible but I think, also myself, mm. I think we just are too, I don't know, it feels too unpleasant. These, it's too, uh, but it's so simple and why not? And also they cost, of course, they cost money. So they should be distributed freely and <laughs> whatever. I don't know what you think about that. I will post this article. Yeah, it's interesting that you, um, that we're speaking about or that you're speaking um, about uh, the question of uh, infection and um, strategies of Im Im immuniz immunization in a way, because uh, speaking about networks, of course, <laughs> it's also quite a lot about, um, yeah, how to say, about infection, um, but also in a, in a positive sense, in a way. I, f I feel um, that it has quite a, quite a connection. And it's interesting as well with, with the festival, with Favoriten and, of course, the Fusion Festival, because there, there of course, you have a network um, with joint interests, um, but also a network of, of possible infection. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, it might also also be an infection of uh, getting infected, um, yeah, of ideas that might be in the room, <laughs> not just not just a virus. So yeah, there might be a connection <laughs> that we can make. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My question was how long you haven't been talking and um, what Mariah can tell us from Toro in her country right now um we have been talking uh, all all the week all the day Sina, uh, for the last 10 days or so but not about this <laughs> yes that's the other talking thing about very we... different things yeah yeah um and uh about what's going on in holland um wow it's uh it's very confusing i have to say I could not tell you what's going on in Holland because everything seems um, 
very entangled with each other. Uh, so I think nobody really say what's going on. And there's a lot of uh, um, different forces at work from the government, from the epidemiologists uh, in charge, from those who uh, uh, can't stand anymore, those who don't really trust what is going on. Um, also scientists that, uh, that are starting to show different opinions and different voices uh, than the official readings. And, um, and I think that's the best I can do for you <laughs> right now. Mm -hmm on the situation so it's pretty confused actually uh, i i love uh, um yasha your your switcheroo uh into the other infectiousness mm -hmm. um because i think i think it's um very dangerous for us as as artists to um not find our own active power in this moment, our ability to organize, to do, to reach out. And as we cannot uh, rule the world, we must deal with it as it comes to us and uh, finding ways that we can still, you know, infect in this positive way. However, that happens on Zoom or very small scale uh, events, maybe a bit underground events taking care of safety as as you can and as you uh, are able to um that is i think in all this confusion something very important for all of us all citizens but especially also for the arts and the artist yeah, but this yeah. gi this gives me i mean this gives me hope so this gives me hope <clears throat> so you go and you can test and then you do outdoor event it's possible. Outdoor is no problem. And you go inside and you wear a mask. So it's. P I know perfectly what to do. I'm not helpless. I find it very. Yeah. I find it very encouraging. Now that the rules of the governments enable me to organize, <laughs> this is the other problem, no? But this is uh, other problem. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But of but of course it wasn't just um yeah speaking about uh yeah the the how to say um. Um, the illusion of immunity or and of course the discovers of uh, d infection um it was not just uh meant humorous in a way it was of course um uh yeah it's it's there is always a risk um in um in every exchange uh, you may have uh, be it with other be it with another uh, entity with another group with another human being with uh, another um yeah another um, organism whatsoever <laughs> there's always a, a risk um, um, and uh, this is what I find interesting as well and what what I'm really thinking mm -hmm. a lot about um, throughout this whole year um, how it actually will affect us um, yeah um, how to say, when when um, so how to, how to say um, when the social uh, connectedness in a way changes um, and uh, I think um speaking about networking there's also that's also interesting because of course you have this the you have this notion of networking and this is pretty much about getting to know people as well in a way, in a sense that you have more people um to advertise to or to mail to and this of course is a different thing than than um a connectedness that is uh in a way that has to do with yeah, um, very much. with a of, with a with the with a thing of begegnung of a encounter, Meet. because of course mm -hmm. this is something different, um, and I think this is very important, and this is also very important to get the link to Cheers for Fears for mm -hmm. our um, student and young artist network. That it's of course we got a mailing list, of course we got Facebook, and but I, what I experience quite a lot in these times is. That you got as well something like these cold networks, <laughs> I call yeah. them sometimes. Yeah. That you I, a list so of names. It's, it's really, it's really inter mm -hmm. interesting that that you feel. Um, I, I I don't know. I get thirty, forty mails a day, but this not this does not does not change the way I feel, experience. Uh, how do you say? Yeah, loneliness in a way, or solitude mm -hmm. in a way. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, and this, of course, is a very different um, kind of exchange than the one when you meet someone. Of course, you, it's, it's not always about um, physical um, uh, uh, presence. It, it can also be in a letter or something. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. Uh, it's not just always about presence. But I think there's a really a difference mm -hmm. between these what networks might be and what we understand networks might be. And uh, yeah. this is something that I really think a lot about since Cheers for Fears exists. Yeah. Thinking about Yasha's words, because I also feel quite lonely when we had an an event. 30 people talking in one room and then we all go home and then I also feel quite lonely. So it's not an, yeah, to be quite honest, I, I don't know what, I'm, I'm now thinking about what makes feeling of not being, make feeling of mm, being connected. Mm. Um, but um, if it's not the 40 emails a day for Yasha, it's also not um, having real life events for me, then yeah, it's <laughs> the third thing. I think there's something else. Yeah, yeah. You you mean that uh, also after <laughs> live events, also in the presence of others, you can also go home and don't have. Oh, you can also experience no connection at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's of course the, it's <laughs> the life. The old, yeah, the of depression. course. The old theater depression that you feel very lonely yeah, yeah. after an event. Actually, I Mar think there's a a couple. Of, uh, yeah. Oh, sorry. No, yeah, so Mariah, you should you should say what, and I would like to 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 um, then go quickly into our Easter village because I experienced something interesting yeah. there. Ah, yeah, I think I can bring it there actually mm -hmm. because. Um, um, I think there's there's a very good word that you mentioned, Yasha, that was encounter. And encounters have in them, in wrapped in it, this uh, uh, sense of being changed and changing the other, being changed by the other and changing the other. So something is exchanged, but also you are impacting one another, and something new appears or something new happens. You are changed, you're shifted, and that is the risk, right? You never know where that is going to go, and that's what also makes it very uh, organic and alive. And in that sense, I think uh, ecology is a very good word also for uh, to set it apart from a network that, uh, that might be cold and um, very much functional. You know, you know why you're there and you know what you want to get <laughs> and you're going to... Yeah you know, gather your name so you will get it. And and that's, of course, a very charged way of uh, describing it, but 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 one could. Um, and there's something about this aliveness of the encounter-based um, connection that starts to go towards village, starts to go towards family. It has... Um, Nothing necessarily to do, I think, with longevity. You know, it doesn't need to be a lifelong connection for it to have this uh, uh, character. And also with these encounters, one can say that um, it can be one moment, but its impact can become apparent maybe 10 years after. So they have a very long reverberation and a very long... Uh, working in each other and that's where I find interesting the loneliness seems to live also um, on the expectation and the trust that you will have a c encounters and that you are moving in circles that will give you this so you're not grasping mm -hmm. on them or needing uh, hunting them down but you are able to uh, kind of let them uh, or no welcome them and work with them instead of uh, grasping for it or, or keeping it you know when the with the risk we've been speaking about where you you don't know where it will go and you have to be able to lose and let go of a, of a connection as much as you are, have to be able to welcome it and uh, i think this is where i come to the to the uh, easter village project that simon was mentioning that we have been doing last week yeah, which is experimenting in a way that 
many people can come together, move around each other, have more or less fixed groups, but also have the freedom to move around. And that something of that uh, trust of having encounters and being being present, able to be alone, but also with the others, uh, was achieved, I think, in, in a week long of mm. work. Yeah, maybe maybe some... Because we, this is a project that we did last week just, and it was very. I was, I'm so happy and a little bit proud. I have to say because we had, hmm. we had um, more or less 25 people from all over the world for a one week online work together. No, it, it was not called workshop. It was more uh, we called it a laboratory, whatever that means. No, but and and with Mariah, uh, we were <coughs> planning it a little bit. <coughs> Uh, and um, we thought about how could we, what what could be the angle, like or the name or some the impulse to 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 give it a kind of a, um, yeah um, horizontal hierarchy style, no, but also live lively, and that's wh where we came up with this village metaphor, no. Even it's very kitsch, no, and cliche, but somehow it worked for us just to say. We are going to make a temporary village together, no? Mm -hmm. And what do you have in the village? You have a square and you have uh, different houses and different families. So we said we are together in one, one village for one week, uh, an online village, of course, and we are going to split into different families. And these families are going to meet and to work on their family things and We come together every evening as the whole village, and in the end of the week, we we invite also guests. So, um, and this metaphor somehow really uh, awakened, mm -hmm. uh, I think, uh, in, uh, <laughs> gave us uh, inspiration yeah, and something. yeah, and enthusiasm, and somehow it worked also for the people that came, which were from. Germany and from Holland and from South America and from USA and <laughs> from Italy Finland and, and Finland and it was yeah. and we had one common topic so uh, it was a theatrical text uh, which we wanted to work with and we really thought how could we impulse this work so that in the end it gets a dynamic of its own and the people uh, yeah and that the mm. people start responding and working and not only because we are telling them what to do or something no and uh, that's a mm, i think simon before because we can speak for a long time about the village and, and maybe we should at another time but i think that's interesting to note two things one is that village is a uh and a concept and a and a word that is alive very much in these times it's for instance also uh very present in the cross-pollination work um my artist collective that uh, has some similarities i think with your guys uh, initiative mm -hmm. in a way and also with your project that i saw on your uh, website um this interdisciplinary laboratory mm -hmm. that that uh, also looks at uh, how can we move and connect and create in this um in these spaces and and use it uh, somehow together you know, i saw i saw a lot of words that i recognize from our own discourse and it will be very interesting guys to hear from you how that went because it's already passed eh? it was yeah two weeks ago um, yeah yeah it was wonderful because it was it had a similar interest to get together groups and uh, uh started work but um we had quite a hybrid of coming together in real life and um, meeting online because mm. as having, um, yeah, as a professional rehearsal, we had the possibility to meet with masks and so on. Um, and um, yeah, the first thing is that something good, that good things worked after one week we were at the point to say now we can start a production together. Um, <laughs> yeah. It was it was a very creative experience, but um, we the focus was to explore the different um, spaces of work of artistic work. And um, after now having worked for one year digitally, um, 
to to try to combine digital and um, real life work, and yeah. that didn't work this good. Um, okay. We lost the digital participants very soon. Ah, you, um, you ah. were you were together. People people that were together uh, present in the same and yeah, and digital. Happened. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Um, uh, and the, the digital, digital ones dropped out. Yeah. Yes. I can understand. Uh, um, <laughs> the yes. and the 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 real space had a great. Um, I don't know how to say it. A zook. Uh, it took pull, great focus. A pull. Had a great pull. Mm. The real space mm -hmm. had a great pull to pull the group together, and um, we tried, but um, the digital participants didn't um, didn't feel the commitment to stay with mm -hmm. us. So I'm still on the um, standpoint that um, you can rather do real life laboratory or workshop or whatever, or you can do online. I mm -hmm. have, uh, as you did, I had uh, experienced very productive um, uh, collaboration purely online, getting to know each other online, working artistically together on and presenting the art online. But um, I'm interested in the mixed forms and they are not yeah. that great. That yes. Yeah. This, in the yeah. Moment. this is one idea that I will have actually mm -hmm. for next year to, to try to make something like this Easter Village, Mariah, Again, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. but to make a real, real laboratory with real people here or somewhere else, but also enable yeah. enable other people yeah. from South America and uh, to participate and to find this exactly this how could it work? Yeah. Because I know why it does not work because I am at the computer and I see all those nice people sitting together, and uh, in the evening they go for mm -hmm. a beer and I'm alone in my house and <laughs> get really yeah, sad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's true. So, uh, yeah, it's very. I I agree. I I'm sure it can work. I'm hundred percent sure it can work. But it it will take a, uh, it will take finding where the encounters really come alive, so that the experience becomes meaningful. You no, know, for the one that mm. is a, uh, ones that are outside. But but uh, Sina, when you look back, oh sorry, Yasha, were you speaking? No, no. I just wanted to to, to um, add that um, staying with the with the image of the village. Um, I really mm -hmm. like that um, idea. Of course, what is interesting there is that mm -hmm. is that what you share is a certain um, vulnerability, uh, relatedness, but also that you depend on each other. You need each other. Mm -hmm. There, there's mm -hmm. someone um, um, working yeah. on the fields. There's someone preparing the bread. Um, Uh, there might be by someone caring for the sheep, um, and of course, caring is an important thing. And I think <laughs> I this love is, your this your image of the village. It <laughs> takes us <laughs> yeah. 200 years of back, the village, 150 years ago. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, no, but but just uh, yeah. Of course, we can have another <laughs> image as well. But it's about it's about a a, um, a connection and <laughs> a zusammenhang <laughs> where where it's really about. Um, about needing each other, and yeah. I think this is interesting. Um, mm. That uh, thinking about um, con connectedness today, and um, this is what we really experience that it either works when you do online things or you do live things, but it's hard to combine this. And of course, it's really important to to question: might this hang uh, con be connected with uh, the question what we actually, um, yeah. Um, how to say um, how we depend on each other and uh, what we can expect from each other and I think there perhaps it's also a, a techno technological question um, uh, that mm. that um, that there yeah we there are st we still need ways to find uh, in a way to connect and um, meaning not it that it's just the yeah you just are the physical on such a right track. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I just very sorry, excited sorry about what you said. <laughs> no, no, no you, you said something so nice because you said about the dependency and what do we need from each other, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, this kind of surrender to, okay, I am here. Uh, you know, let's make a work together. But this need, I think there is a very real key to make the people that are out feeling that they really belong is when something is mm -hmm. actually needed from those in South America, 
So yeah. what could you need from those far-flung adventurers, you know, those those uh, in in alien spaces? And I'm not saying this as a uh, everything in Europe is known and outside is alien. It could be that the village is in South America and we are the aliens, right? It doesn't really matter. But those that are far away can bring something uh, incredibly precious to the village, which I think in if we are speaking about networks and all this, like how do we independent artists become more powerful together? That is as really important. You have your village, but also important that you are connected to the other villages, that you have your um, ways out so you don't become an isolated little studio in Berlin, but you have... Uh, your lines out or in Schrette uh, or in Amsterdam but we are having all these lines threads connecting us and I think there is actually would be a great way Simon when we do the village uh, proximal next year that uh, Amaranta in Paris does a, also her village there because we can't all travel to be with each other right it's just not possible but then we make this um, this moment to shine out. You mean we make the you, make, you mean we make the village, but <clears throat> the vi but the different <clears throat> families are actually in different places meeting. Yeah, really, exactly. So we have exactly. one family here in Germany, one exactly. family in Paris, one family there, and they all and then yeah. somehow come together with yeah. uh, some uh, hermits, uh, <laughs> you know, some some lonely <laughs> hermits uh, that are uh, representing something else altogether. Yeah. And um, mm. and it's uh, as Eugenio Barba once said to me: you have to make this mystical dream that will fuel such a project, to, you know, to make it last. Mm. And it doesn't matter if you never reach it; you just have to like bring it there full force. And uh, I really like that uh, um, suggestion from him. You know, to make the see all the little fires burning uh, at once for a moment. Yeah, yeah, but I sorry, have, Yasha. And I, sorry. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, go on. Go, uh, see. I have also two other mm -hmm. ideas how to mm -hmm. to make a network not a cold one because um, mm. I think the very simple uh, truth lies in um, the title of our initiative, which is Cheers for Fears. And mm -hmm. um, the first idea was always to. Um, um, to create a box where everybody um, opens up in, um, so mm -hmm. that we um, that we start with a premise that um, we somehow talk about vulnerabilities. We are no, I know we are no, not psychotherapy, but we are. Um, we just want to have the premise that we don't have to hold up pasada. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, and have to and yeah in in the question of need really um, um, in first place no, maybe not look what can the other person give to me but mm -hmm. also um, open up um, to to be to be um, even uh, um, yeah, to have this, um, to have a, a connection via humanity and, and, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. and this is the first thing to, 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 to make vulner vulnerability and making the, the, the possible of, the possibility of making mistakes as the premise of mm -hmm. the whole thing. And the Useful. second thing is that to have, uh, one or two magicians that really open the box and <laughs> they hold the frame. Um, yeah. I guess this is also very important. And um, this is, it's also interesting with uh, movements that um, work without leaders. This also, yeah, a thing worth thinking about. But um, I mm -hmm. guess. It's, in our case, it is quite important that there are Yasha and me that we can that we open um, the the f the frame of of the whole thing and the box and put and say you can now go into there and you don't have mm -hmm. to you don't have to gain something you don't have to um, deliver 
um, you have here a free space to meet, to to explore, to um, to try out, and mm. um, um, and it wouldn't work without a framing and and someone who sets up some some kind of rules yeah. how things work. In, and this in you call the magicians. Yes. Can you, can you say a little more about them? Are they always the same people, for instance? Is it you two? Are you the magicians? Sometimes yeah. it's, it's us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sometimes and you throw sometimes the ball around. we invite. Yeah, we, yeah. we invite other magicians uh, that mm -hmm. might bring in experience <laughs> uh, and share. Yeah. And of course, what is important for us is that uh, that everyone, uh, in a way, uh, of the group yeah. uh, that is invited, that shares a festival, a workshop, a mm -hmm. laboratory, mm -hmm. um, may be um, as well mm -hmm. the magician or perhaps something like a teacher or someone who gives input mm -hmm. and has an idea or planned and prepared something and can as well be the one who, uh, yeah, who is... Uh, Part of part of it and yeah. enjoying it, and I, I think you're mm -hmm. always you're always in the best. And the of course, um, when it works good, then you're always both in a way. <laughs> you perhaps you change yeah. roles, but yeah. but it's yeah. it's right. Of course, it's not uh, when we when we um, uh, when when Zina and I um, when we um, when we write uh, how do you say applications anträge, um, it's always mm -hmm. we are always um, yeah we are always <laughs> writing that it's really that it's just the that it, uh, the the young artists from Anna, uh, from uh, from from the region they they come together and they want this festival and they want this network happening but of course it's, it it is not like this it always has to be mm -hmm. uh, concrete people who do it um, and. Uh, um, and it's not not just about immediacy. Um, it has to be planned in a way, of course. Yeah. But what yeah. what still I think is important for us is that there is a hope that you can't plan it all. There's always these mm -hmm. moments of encounter that might happen mm -hmm. or might not happen, and this this perhaps is the magic. It's it's of course there's a lot of a lot of bureaucracy and a lot of work before, and then it might happen, and it might. As will not happen, yeah. but <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's, it's, and it's possible is that it good, happens. Eh? Yeah. yeah, yeah, both is okay. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It comes with the terrain. If you if you invite in risk and encounter, you have to be prepared to um, to see mm -hmm. not only that it might fail, because I think failure does not really uh, belong in that whole um, world. You yeah, know, right. it happens as it happens, and and you never know. I think this is my experience with this kind of organization that you never know where or when it will happen, mm -hmm. or with whom. It might be very much under the under the radar. All these little yeah. pops that uh, that are taking place. And five years later, that's the thing. That, um, the effect um, are upcoming and showing and and. and Uh, uh, getting visible after mm -hmm. years, and yeah, this exactly. is the most fascinating thing for me. Yeah, um, yeah. about um, the, the Yasha mentioned applications, and the most fascinating thing for me is that um, I don't know, eight years ago, it was an aim in an uh, words aiming something in an application, and we want to. Uh, build connections and mm -hmm. um, it was just a rhetoric rhetorical thing and and a thought yeah. and 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 um, and something we we made up in our mind that or um, they were looking at the scene and thinking it would be a great thing to have um, and having and the result we didn't we didn't know we wouldn't have the result not after one festival not after two festivals but after three four years mm -hmm. seeing a scene changing seeing um having the report of other people saying now we the artistic collectives uh, are set up differently we can see yeah. um differences we can see in development in the applications we read and um young artists coming back to us saying, oh, no, I'm working with this guy, this guy, this guy. I met everybody at your network. <laughs> and, um, that's beautiful. This, that's crazy. And um, I'm, I'm freaking out about getting older and, for have, and having the possibility to experience this thing that has that um, in, in had the, the 
um, mainly have the core quality that it takes time. It, it can't mm -hmm. happen mm -hmm. immediately. And yeah. um yeah, and if you when you do in Easter village to to just do it because you think maybe it, maybe something happens, maybe not between the mm -hmm. people. Um quite sure something will happen, but we will maybe get to know this after three years. Yeah. It's fascinating, huh? Mm -hmm. And I, I think this connects very much to my response to your your um, remark that you feel lonely sometimes after. But after this kind of event where the reverberations, um, and it and because it repeats and it it stays somehow in all its changeability, that that it really does build it. If I listen to you, I, I get the feeling that you managed to build together with all the people an environment, you know, in which you can be. And um, not to say that it's a utopia, but in which when you are uh, moving in around in there, you can be sure you will meet other people. You will have possibilities to click with someone or find an idea. And um, I think this is the best way to actually combat some of the precariousness and loneliness that comes with uh, this kind of very product-oriented neoliberal career um, way that uh, that the arts also can be organized. No, it's like you have to get the next role or you have to make, make your name or make your reputation and be genius and... Uh, And make sure you get the credits for everything. <laughs> But this, this kind of, um, which cuts yeah, a lot of, course, of relations. Yeah, and it's 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 really I think, um, yeah, feeling lonely and as well um, this moment after some uh, laboratory or festival where you really feel, feel uh, lonely is of course it has to do with that um, that of course it's not possible to build to build up such a village feeling for a long time mm. it's always um it's short term but still there is a system sustainability um in the in the connections that people build up throughout some years working together but still of course it's not um how to say it's uh um still of course you always um It it can't be in this intensity for for a for a for a super long time. It's always there are always moments where then uh, you're very much um, yeah thrown back to to a certain precariousness, of course, and um, mm -hmm. um, and yeah, and this is also this this might be also interesting to ask how still it is possible to uh to hold on to some kind of connectedness um yeah um that that goes far uh beyond um one fe uh, festival or one laboratory um yeah 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 i agree and i think that is something that we are now also maybe the covid crisis uh, uh could bring a bit of a speed to that process but i think there's a lot of awareness rising Uh, in the whole independent scene across Europe, that uh, uh, it's not only about these celebrations and these uh, uh, short moments, but that we need to make uh, the village structure, if you will, um, more strong so it becomes a daily thing. It becomes just the, the sea use women. It's your material, it's your... Uh, It brings your resources. It you have uh, because a lot of it is also about finding people to work with and finding places to work. Right, this is something so basic mm -hmm. for uh, our uh, uh, profession, or that one could organize. As Simon said, I want to know that I can organize and uh, and make things happen. And this grassroots, uh, very independent. Um, uh, connections that we make on these moments but that that have we have to find uh how they can stay fueled and i think to be honest i think the fundings mechanisms and the uh, also on the european level are slowly starting to see that that is a really good idea that it cannot only come from through the institutions 
and through the big um yeah that you know for instance small localities that's why the village uh, image is again very powerful the, the small places need to be taken in the small artists need to be seen for what they are like good and very powerful uh forces in their in their environment Simon, you know a little bit the what the net the network we are talking about, so, and um, and bro broader spoken the the art scene of Northern Australia. Um, do you? Yeah, can you valid what we are talking about? Can you? Um, do you feel something about? Yeah, we. You know the people. You know. Uh, you hope to whom you can get back to. Um, And those, the feeling of connectedness or being lonely, especially having, a, I'm sorry, but to me, we are one hour apart, I guess. And to me, it is quite a hard thing to, to get out to your cultural space. So, yeah. um, especially in, in, yeah, in the, in the question of topography and feeling connected. Uh, yeah, for me, it's uh, really, I, of course, invited you here because um, uh, I'm, I wanted to talk more to you because it's, in fact, we live very near to each other, but I, I don't, I'm not, I don't consider myself part of the network, for instance, of your, of the Cheers for Fears. Um, and I'm very, com I'm, I'm looking, I'm, I'm receiving the emails and everything, but As I never studied theater here, I never studied theater anywhere, but I never studied theater also here. I'm taught I'm an outsider also to the, uh, to the, um, to the, um, uh, so, so university and studying theater somewhere. This is also a big connection with, with people, no? So, um, mm -hmm. what the network proposes, I found always talking a lot to the, graduates of university or of theater no of this um, but but actually it's a very strange question i'm i'm <laughs> because or a very good question because at the moment i feel especially also during this uh, pandemic because but also before uh, i i i feel that i sometimes have more connection to to artists outside of germany than actually in my mm -hmm. neighborhood <laughs> <laughs> or in my next in the next mm -hmm. cities no it's uh this is what i also want to i want to go. Mm. this is why i'm also not starting a podcast in german i why i why i'm do why am i doing this in english for god's sake i don't know that's very strange <laughs> <laughs> i mean an english is not my mother yeah. i should do this in german and, and <laughs> but uh, sometimes somehow i I also feel that maybe because Mariah mentioned Eugenio, Eugenio Barba and we are connected mm -hmm. a little bit to the Odin Theater and also my director or um, the colleague which I work with, Christoph, he, uh, he, so this, uh, he worked there in, in Denmark w with the uh, Odin Theater and this kind of tradition, let's say, if we call it a tradition, we are not Mm -hmm. adapt to the tradition i don't care about the tradition no fuck fuck the tradition but um, <laughs> at, at, especially aesthetic tradition no it's not about this but um, we are some kind of um well, there is some kind of line and this line of for instance odin theater and uh, it's uh, mm. it really never set foot in germany so there are a lot of different mm -hmm. other 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 points of reference that i for instance i don't know <laughs> i have some points of reference in 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 performance or in theater ensembles or groups maybe and but i think that also here are a lot of other mm -hmm. points of reference which i don't mm -hmm. have so much and so this is um yeah you touch interesting. yeah you, <laughs> you touch on a really interesting um point because i'm i'm all the time uh, since we started uh, also with the village discussion i'm really thinking about questions of identity um inclusion and exclusion mm -hmm. <laughs> this of course is also uh, uh, so this also might be some points that we might discuss uh, concerning uh, or discussing uh, networks um mm -hmm. because for us it is really really a good question because what we do not want of course it's it is about the students from from the region from northern westphalia 
Um, but uh, and of course, it's about students and the academia, and uh, this, of course, um, in a way, excludes others. And this is what we um, talk and discuss a lot about. Um, and we always try to open it up in a way that we said everyone. It, it might be art students or theater students, but it might as well be um, artists from the region who are in a way approaching approaching. Um, Yeah, approaching artists and um, uh, yeah, this is this is really a good question also, also concerning mm -hmm. the village. But I think because in my perhaps um, yeah, when I hear village, I always have this feeling that um, how to say that uh, um, yeah, perhaps I have an under antique understanding of village, but I always uh, think about about this. Um, This unity, this this group that that uh, belongs together, and of course, belonging uh, is something, and as well, family. The word family um, is something that, uh, that might give you war, might yeah, that might give you warmth, <laughs> and that is good to have, but it will can be a horror to have. It, it <laughs> and can be a course, horror, completely. Um, horror. <laughs> it can be a horror not to be part of a family or not to be part of a village, and so this is also a question that um, I think is super important. Mm -hmm. um, to discuss and uh, without having an answer <laughs> to it. Yeah. But, um, well, yeah. Can, can I respond to you um, no. on, on yes, this? Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> That's a great. <laughs> so there's a, there's a couple of things. First, first is this uh, notions of radical care and radical hospitality um, that are um, floating around coming from um and now we we promise each other Simon and me that if we need to reference something and we need a little time to <laughs> look up the right name that this would be possible but now we are doing it live and I can't find the name anyways I'll I'll look, can, it, up yeah, and, and, look it up and and let you know later but it's an interesting concept uh, actually and and uh, it connects very much to this vulnerability you mentioned earlier Sina and uh And also the um, this thing of of how do you deal with uh, exclusion and inclusion, and the other thing I wanted to put here, and this is maybe more um, good for the conversation, is the notion that um, it's not us that are in one village, right? If you are in the real world, you are in a village, and you cannot be anywhere else. You are in this village. It's a It's a physical <laughs> fact. It's a geographical fact. Um, but when you use village as a as a as an image, as this notion of this is where things come together that kind of uh, gravitate towards each other, mm. then it becomes possible to think of village as something that actually resides in us. In the villageness flows through our practices our knowledge our actions and in that way of understanding a village there's no reason why you should not be in many villages at once mm -hmm. and that also the the boundaries and the actualization of village is in essence a temporary thing not an exclusive thing also not a thing of rights it just is a thing that uh, that really um follows what is happening rather than determining what is happening and i think that is a uh, one way that that i'm trying to uh, think about this inclusion that it's not ever about everyone has the right to be here because of what where is here who's everyone and and what will they do when they come here it's not a real place i cannot you know it so when the village becomes an action you are there when you when you take part and when you can take part and it it just brings a yeah a different perspective on thinking about that that there's um And then you can navigate this question of uh, how do we include those that that would have um, something, uh, uh, you know, that would be interested. Maybe interest becomes a very important factor in who who will be there or not, or who will be 
present in the village. And also also capacity. If you uh, don't have the time to be in the village, then you cannot be in the village. This we had in our group. There was one that insisted I'm part of the group, but he can never be there. And then you just, in a way, are not there. And you cannot be there in theory or because you have rights to be. It, it was a very interesting uh, moment, actually. Not yeah, I like the, the idea. Mm -hmm. no, but I, yeah, I really it, like it, the idea. Sorry. No, it's, it's, there's another uh, one that we very much uh, work with. Uh, we try in our collective to work a lot with this uh, um, philosophers that we feel a resonance with in our work. And uh, this uh, philosopher Donna Haraway has written a very uh, important book called uh, Staying with the Trouble. And you can find it uh, uh, very much everywhere now because it speaks so much to finding another perspective on how to do the right thing. And the right thing doesn't become a moral, uh, like a going towards good or bad, but she says, no, we have to stay here in the present with the trouble and not always try to push your solution in there because you will probably not solve anything. You know, the solution have to emerge like you were saying, uh, you cannot force this network to be. It needs four or five years to grow, right? You cannot force it into uh, into existence just because you really work for it. So she says, stay with the trouble. Keep organizing, keep doing, keep uh, working with it. And so also one of these very good uh, shift of perspective. Yeah, yeah. I found I find this super interesting, um, and also I'm just working with uh, with the with the staying with the travel book <laughs> travel book. Oh, um, nice! Uh, yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah, and it's really. But sometimes, of course, it's hard. If, as you, as you, uh, as you, as we are also project makers. You're almost always so much about the future and imagination and. Uh, um, and what might be next, what mm -hmm. might come up. Mm -hmm. And this is such a different experience than, of course, staying with the trouble and also staying with the, with the questions that are yeah, on offer um, in a certain <laughs> relation, in a certain context, in a certain situ situation. And this is what really I'm, I'm often struggling with as well, because um, it's so important to, uh, and this is also important, I think, um, uh, difficult for artists just now, because we are all planning. I think I have the feeling mm. for many that money is not in the moment the big problem, but uh, the problem uh, is that we can't realize something. That it's we are always planning. That there's uh, heaps of money in Germany for in the moment um, for getting things uh, um, to to realize projects, but then uh, uh, projects are postponed and postponed, and so you're just in. Hmm. Um, you're just yeah. in um, yeah. developing projects um, and um, uh, and werfen, uh, dra dra doing drafts, uh, and of course, uh, um, then you have to write your uh, how to say um, your Verwendungsnachweis, your um, yeah. Yeah. Um, your proof of use, yeah, your uh, in uh -huh. a way, uh, and mm -hmm. but there's no time for 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 the real thing to happen for actually the. Uh, for for staying with the trouble because it's it's not possible um, yeah. concerning all the questions of infection, <laughs> and this is a, also <laughs> a really strange experience that we are just having now. I don't know how you feel, how you uh, yeah connect to that. <laughs> no, it's exactly this is the this is the this is the the great uh, how do you say the or oh, the cynical genius of this virus that it's just. Cutting out all the spontaneity, spon or no spontaneity, but maybe these accidents or these things that can happen just between us. No, if we meet, um, no. Now everything no. has to be planned, more or less. I, I don't know about that. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. In general, on this, can, on this year, you need to yeah, plan. In general, you need to but, plan. You but have, the, have I, the have I got my mask to me? The test. Uh, 
Yeah, okay, these but things. What, but but no, also, but you don't want to go without your bank card. Always planning uh, on that level, you know, your telephone, your... Uh, but I did find that that this year, horrible as it has been in the sense of what you say, uh, Yasha, that you cannot do, that the action is sorely lacking. And, and then it's planning and jumping straight to the... <laughs> to the report without the thing ever happening. It's, it's like mm -hmm. nightmarish. But other things have started to happen that have kind of shifted, actually, my whole, uh, um, my whole perspective on what action means. Mm -hmm. Not completely and not uh, that I don't ever want to perform again, but it has definitely <laughs> broken open... <laughs> This, you want to do podcasts like I, I now. feel, yeah, I just want to do podcasts. <laughs> well, it's, it's a little like that, you know. I, I feel like I've been broken, weaned away from uh, this addiction of having projects, 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 and and playing and performing and and the next tour and the next, and and there's something has starting to show itself in that uh, <laughs> in that empty space, that is very much brought back to. A question of so what are we actually really doing if we say it's encounters how do we really do that with 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 spectators with the localities where we are with and that usually i have to say it's not on a big organized festival in a or in the big theater in town it's it's just not calling me at the moment I'm starting to be very interested in breaking open things that are broken, things that that show um, the space in between what you guys also write in your uh, on your website somewhere. You know this, where it's not yet um, determined, and uh, and the tickets are not sold for next year, September or or December. It's like horrible. Uh, uh, normalities of the theater world that so even though that has happened there another kind of action has started to show itself i think and and that this has been like a revolutionary year for me personally even though i have not done much in the in this way of performing how was that for you you guys as as uh you know, the people in your network and you, you yourselves also. Yeah, I guess there's a big difference between the network and the um, primary artistic work because mm -hmm. um, it's um, almost frightening how good network can uh, works uh, in times of um, <laughs> pandemic yeah. because exactly. we, we can do so much. Yeah, we did. Um, we could modify so many things. It would be horrible mm -hmm. to postpone everything. Um, it's postponing is not possible because time goes on, and people are have different commitments in different times. And um, we um, did real life uh, as, um, events um, this yeah in March in last October. So we uh, we did workshops with. Um, hygiene concept um, last year and we also did complete online um, collaborations and online festivals, online um, mm -hmm. academies. Um, I have the feeling networking, coming together is very good possible at the moment, but um, the feeling Yasha described is this primary artistic art that always has to adapt and to face um, uh, another lockdown and another mm. closing and another period of things don't not working and um, the 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 critical thing for me in this is um, that the narrative that funded art uh, had over the last year um, there was a pretty little narrative of I have an idea. I try to. I, tr I try very hard to have a good um, 
well well written idea i i'll get money for this it's it's well um um well um approved. articulated know, yeah it's well articulated but um they also the i'll look it up <laughs> um it's it's also very well considered whether one gets mm -hmm, the money mm -hmm. or not um everybody in the juries does the best work to um get the money through and then you also have to as yasha says uh, prove the use of your money and have to uh, prove here's the flyer i did it and um mm -hmm. it has been narrated <laughs> our funding our funding nowadays has a narrative whether it is project concept mm -hmm. conception and um or um yeah it has a narrative of getting up the ladder a little bit and um the the ladder of an artistic life it's kind of always has been ridiculous and this is strange and to question and it gets so much questioned now because um mm -hmm. it's not uh, yeah it's a revolutionary and somehow mind freeing and also very um terrifying, horrifying a little bit. Um um insecurity, it's getting all insecure because the narrative isn't working anymore. Uh, we, they get us they mm -hmm. uh, give us mm -hmm. the money anyway because not to uh, get the numbers of um the unemployed up and um yeah. the narrative of the sensefulness of the whole thing. The narrate that was that late in an artistic piece um, gets lost, and um, this is a little um, uh, yeah everything getting uh, insecure and strange because uh, the this was also a framing that helped doing things. Oh, I have to get my ideas ready. We have to uh, 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 send in the application, and uh, we have to get ready. To this point, everybody was um, always um, um, not happy about those limitations and framings of funding. And um, I think the, the the it's interesting how it feels now. Those little changes um, when funding is in the first time for a broader mass of artists not um, bound to to this. Um, sensefulness anymore and um and this leads to the question what motivates us to do art and the question of would basic income work um because i personally i feel it for me it is harder to um um to create a project if i get the money but i don't know i have to prove anything um I, I, for me, this framing of proving what I'm doing works a little bit, <laughs> and mm -hmm. I, it, it's very strange to feel this, and um, and how the relation of of mm -hmm. of institutions giving you the the room and and the the possibility to make art, and the own will to do it, um, or to make art or to connect people. Um, and to do all the things in the non-economic sector, um, mm. how these two parts stick together. I think this is very interesting to 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 um, examine at the moment on a on a level a little bit of how does it feel, uh, how how is this connection? How does it feel? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, uh, this examination we're in this right now. So I just have yeah. the possibility to examine the the feeling of this relation. Uh -huh. and right. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. Can't, yeah. I can't. Uh, up, um, uh, I can't do an abstraction on it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Does it have to do also with the with the um that it's kind of lifted out of the uh like normal uh humdrum way of uh, going about it that now you are like looking at it differently or have more time maybe to look at it no we don't have more time <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> Do 
Do you think do you think your art will be changed after this? Do you think it will be different, or your relation with it? How you uh, uh, how you will work? Mm. Well, let's let's. Uh... That's a good question. Um, I, what I, in a way, what I experienced positively um, um, is the feeling that uh, that of course you're always uh, or how to say. Uh, let me change. Let me start again. I'm just new, now doing a project that is a performance installation and that is called uh, No Future Club, and. Uh, it's pretty much about the question how we approach um, uh, the present or how we are bound to a certain understanding of um, 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 of future and always the feeling that you're mm -hmm. not that you're not uh, feeling the presence the, the present yeah um, so it's pretty much about what we talk, talked about and yeah. Um, yeah. and um, what was interesting for me is that that I did a um, research and th that I knew now do a performance installation that is um, really more for one person who might visit me at a time, and mm -hmm. then but then I have additional funding for a bigger performance. And what actually, in a positive sense, um, this situation did do was that I um, felt that perhaps um, it's it might be interesting and important. <laughs> Um, not to uh, uh, not to go um, how to say it's hard to it's hard to, to bring it to, uh, down. Um, uh, but, but what I what I then thought is okay now I have to realize this big thing because I have all this Corona funding, uh, and then I felt hmm uh, perhaps that is actually not the point, um, and perhaps it's really more about um, uh, uh, about. Um, how, uh, about the question how may i actually um uh yeah um pr provide uh um an experience for uh, mm -hmm. for the one p who is uh, visiting me at a time and uh, and of course as well for me and um how is it then possible to uh, pay uh, to pay my team well and not mm -hmm. so much to again go into this thing that i i think okay now i have this and this amount and usually with this and this amount it has to be a, a one and a half hour show <laughs> to um, yeah. perhaps this is this is also a chance um of these fundings now that um that you that you that you begin to reflect um uh, on the way uh, you usually um, use the money you squeeze everything out you you think okay mm -hmm. it, it might be some additional team member in okay it's less money for everyone but whatever and this time I really had the feeling that uh, well perhaps I just stick to my idea that I did with this um, with this small funding <laughs> and mm -hmm. then it's possible to perhaps work uh, in detail on some things I made might uh, pay my team better but then Perhaps it's fine with that, and this is also what I what I perhaps um, where I see the chance um, yeah. today. Um, how to how to perhaps work um, with this uh, yeah with this Corona situation and the funding mm -hmm. um, concerning concerning yeah. the Corona situation. Sorry, it was a little complicated. I formulated it. I had to no no very <laughs> find the words very clear. Yeah, it's very clear. Yeah, and it speaks very much to you know when things. The, the it's it's really something special that happen, happens when your routine is broken, or your normalities are broken. Mm -hmm. uh, that it's uh, possible to reflect differently, and and in a way, I really uh, for a while now have been thinking like some years uh, this is going to be the time of the small. It's going to be the time of the local, of the personal, and. And it's something uh, again. Our um, uh, visionary Eugenio Barba has written uh, in a way that you know he he coined this term third theater. I don't know if you guys have heard of this uh, these words third theater. So Not yet. the first theater in this uh, in this uh, uh, 
viewpoint, if the first theater is what is going on in the big theaters, the state theaters and the big funding funded theaters. Then the second theater is the avant-garde, which is around and and strives to be the next first theater, right? This is their, their goal. Mm-hmm. They want to become like the next thing. And then there's the I third theater. This. Sorry? I'd question this, but uh, go on. <laughs> well, maybe maybe those. Uh, it, not all avant-garde is like that, but it it does happen at least. Mm-hmm. Anyways, those that are not like that, <laughs> that, <laughs> that are full kind of outside of this whole mechanism of wanting to become the mainstream, uh, which is not like uh, Broadway. Eh? Miss mainstream, I mean, like the big funded things. Uh, in the in the high art, like uh, the rep, the people with reputation that get uh, the big fundings, um, and then in in his view, the third theater is a whole group of people that do basically because they are interested, and they are um, very usually very in, working independently on very small fundings or very locally. And they find each other uh, in a bit messy uh, connections, creating a, what you could see as an archipelago of uh, rather than a solid country. <laughs> so it has all different little microcultures, uh, strange individuals, and uh, and I, I like it because uh, uh, I feel kind of attracted to that realm of not wanting to become the next big thing, but but very much interested in doing my work, doing my work with those that I really like to work with. Um, and that is this, yeah, this small... Yeah, yeah, yeah just, uh, that, that was just the, the thing I intervented because I didn't mm-hmm. hear about the third theater yet. Oh, okay. Because yeah, yeah. I always know, that is all I know is third theater. Um, and, right, right. Um, uh-huh. This... And mistaken um, two and three is, is always an interesting thing because um, uh, w- one crucial point we are dealing with is the is is the term of young art scene, and mm-hmm. um, the establishment called um, pre theater scene, uh, young art scene, even if you are forty five and the best established free theater group in whole state because they uh, see you as an two as a as a number two and see right. you as one striving to get yeah. established and, part, and exactly part, part, number three says no uh, what the f- <laughs> what the beep we don't <laughs> yeah. we we're, yeah. we're not striving we're Can not say fuck you emerging. we're not the, no I, it's just my little game there. um <laughs> <laughs> um yeah it's they, 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 we, they we have a misunderstanding of the, of the establishment mi- mixing up the two and the three or not seeing the three not seeing mm-hmm. the ones who don't want to get in their place and um yeah i i don't know about yasha but i'm such a great lover of of the sector three because um mm-hmm. also now in the digital in in the in the in this Overwhelming digital wave for the theaters. Um, we have mm-hmm. we have so many things going on, working not that good, because we care about taking the ethical online tool, or we talk or we caring about taking the self programmed ethical tool, or doing the self programmed technique, or trying out things. Yeah, we didn't know before. Or trying out the things. That are not the most commercial and um, and and expensive things, and not it is not um, it is not I don't know I I word in a second it's not smooth it's not clean and even um, and it's it's not the commercial thing and um, and yeah I like yeah. that we go yeah. the the different the hard way and I like and I. I still today I'm not um off my nerves to sit in on in online academies where I I understand nothing because I know 
the useless effort, but, but the passion everybody brought to try it out. And in 99% of all cases, it won't, it won't give a smooth experience. But I still worship this. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, what what, what I um, I think some connection in a way to what we said to the networks uh, for to the networking on the one side the what I call the this code functional networking and mm -hmm. uh, perhaps um, as well another another understanding of networks as as, as encounters because what I really exper experienced as well with with my last work or with my work to come in a way um, is that I in some point experienced the feeling that. It's much, much more important for me to um, to realize, um, yeah, to re to realize certain encounters and special encounters, then to again because I then said, okay, I, I may show it here and then I can show it here and then I, I saw, well, it's not just about um, uh, about the number of um, uh, presentations coming up or the numbers, um, um, yeah, how to say. Uh, the numbers of uh, the number of shows um, or um, the number of um, yeah, how to say feedback points that that I get with the work, but it's really um, yeah or guest performances. It's it's really much more about the question how dense the encounters are that that are happening uh, in a way, and this is what I really find interesting. And this perhaps might be uh, I haven't read it, but um, of course I like the idea of a third theater as well. That um, and perhaps Sina, mm -hmm. you're right. Perhaps the second theater also the very interesting um, avant-garde groups that, that we know, perhaps they don't even want to be <laughs> the first theater. Um, mm -hmm. And they say, yeah, it's it's really not about becoming the new hot shit. It's really more about, um, yeah, how to say, um, densifying, um, do you say that? Densifying? Uh, Conden or condensing um, the encounters um, that are happening in a way, and I and I think this is a wonderful. Of course, there you can see, of course, um, the pandemic situation as well as a as a chance <laughs> to mm -hmm. to reflect on this feeling to get the next work out even yeah um, yeah to even more people or getting it out even um, um, how to say. Um, To then really have the big, the big coming, um, um, yeah. That, that that of course this is something that we all know as well. That there is might be sometimes a hope that perhaps the net next work then is the chance to uh, to really show everyone that you you are the new star star on the mm -hmm. theater heaven. <laughs> But uh, yeah. then when when I again think about it, um, I really really. Um, enjoy the moments where I have the feeling, okay, there is a certain encounter that works and, um, and this is not, uh, that this is nothing to do with, um, where I, I might, might, I might be, um, able to, to show my work or where, um, how many guest performance I, uh, I may do. And, uh, yeah, this is really interesting, I think. And it's worth, um, yeah, staying with that for a moment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm not, um, free of judging and I, And if I get the picture right, um, we m m it's often that one um, that we wouldn't not value the 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 yeah second the the the, the free mm -hmm. theater um, striving to get the established theater uh, copying um, aesthetics with pura means. Um, I don't, that is not the interesting theater. The interesting theater is to go a third way and, um, to, um, and to, to work with, with the alternative means that you have being not the yeah. best established theater. And, um, and often it's, it has been, uh, a, a choice. Often it has been mm -hmm. not going into the, 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 The fest engagement, I don't know how to call it. Um, not the joining the established theater. Um, yeah. And, yeah. and today we are so privileged that it can be a choice for many. And I'm also so privileged to feel confident that, um, yeah, legends are made by the, by time. And I'm, and yeah, not by, no, uh, 
tomorrow I'll get the next, I'll, I'll, I'll hit the next great hit. And, but, um, um, as I, we are as free theater scene in Europe for the first time, uh, on a certain generational point to see this experience, uh, ex, um, to experience and see how those establishment processes have, um, um, uh, have been undergoing and um, and um, yeah, I'm I'm quite confident and I'm privileged to be confident that um, yeah that yeah that it's not getting the next big hit, but um, that people will talk about the work in twenty years. Um, mm -hmm. This is quite a good feeling, and it's also that it has also to do with many people uh, explaining why I'm not really um, in fear, although I don't know whether I earn money after yeah after twenty 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 one. I think you cut out a little, uh, Sina, in, in this last bit. Yeah, choosing a life that has not a, not a secure perspective. Um, I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, many, many, many people around me are astonished why there's no feeling of security and we don't know when yeah. we get paid yeah. next year. But, um, yeah, this is what we share with so many sectors of the society and it's... Yeah. Funny that yeah. I don't feel unsecure. Yeah, but I feel I see, you know, Asina. I, I, I think uh, there's a, also something very interesting now with, especially with these younger generations. I, I don't consider myself young. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm old, <laughs> but those uh, uh, in the millennials and and after, you know, also generationally, your place in society, how. Uh, the kind of world you find when you come of age and start working or have been working maybe mm -hmm. for 10 years or 15 years is very, very different than yeah. the ones that are the establishment now or maybe at the end of their careers when they came yeah. of age. And I think there's something there that this idea of the third theater now also in in for for your generations makes a lot of sense that you feel attracted to that because um, there is a kind of a disenchantment with uh, the establishment. And I think when this uh, third theater thought was made, it was in the 60s, uh, and, and uh, uh, Jane O'Barba was very much um, uh, socially engaged, but also very much present in uh, Latin America. Where there is a very different culture of uh, of struggle and um, and being in a way very oppressed politically, sometimes really with uh, physical violence and and murder to the theater groups because they were places of resistance. So there is some kind of uh, genealogy there of um, yeah, let's say finding strength in your community, in your uh, village, <laughs> you know, there it is again. And and also in the networks, in the real networks, the ones you can really trust uh, are alive and, and will not only feed you or give you work, but also nourish your spirit in a way, you know, keep you, keep you kind of human. And... Um, uh, so I think that is something that is not. I'm not surprised. It speaks to to you, and I, I hear your words. It it resonates uh, very much. And then this other thing that with the pandemic uh, striking as it has, and the theaters closing, and this many have thought this is the time for the small. This is where you know the small flexible things that kind of as uh, as you say it. Um, Yasha, for one person, how great, how how fantastic that you can do that. That this is the time for these things, but for some reason, it's not really happening. 
So I think there's an urgency that this small, this third theater, this uh, independence, do find each other, to find this resistance and this power and keep each other human so that we can work. So the, the importance of networks like yours, I think, is in a way much greater than, uh, than just the people you are reaching directly. It, it's uh, resonating much, much wider and resonating with bigger things. Um, in a way. Um, of course, it's interesting um, to think to think about um, what actually are um, uh, as this. Of course, is it well as well something that might be interesting for a, a work um, of art uh, performance, but as well for a network where actually is um, yeah this 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 rest this plus one this that is not just um, the sum of um, all the connections made, but really. Um, the yeah the additional mm. thing that that mm -hmm. might stay or that um, that might as well um, uh, resonate in a society that is not just a network not just the sum of connections that you mm -hmm. that we might establish but what as well um, yeah might might happen with that if you if uh, this of course is a big hope for us that um, some, some yeah. network that is called Cheers for Fears that this as well resonates with a society that is very much about uh, performance. And uh, of course, now I mean the other sense of performance mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and very much, and very much about um, evaluation all the time. Um, yeah. And this maximize um, your and then, performance. <laughs> yeah. Maximize your performance. And then um, of course we hope that Cheers for Fears. Uh, yeah. It's, it's something that is not just, um, yeah, that not, that not can be, brought down uh, or summed up as uh, yeah as something uh, yeah like feedback or evalu 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 evaluation or mm -hmm. maximizing mm -hmm. your performance but is yeah <laughs> that there stay that there stays a certain connection in the rest that that is not um, yeah that that you can't just bring down to some yeah um, how to say cybernetic logic in a way <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah, yeah I, I hear you yeah Yeah, I think there's this wonderful uh, idea of immanence that uh, is, of course, a very big uh, concept, and uh, Simon can um, knows a lot uh, more better than me, um, because that's where I am a total autodidact beginner in this philosophy. But I, I find it so fascinating, especially um, knowing what I know from performance. Is this immanence of um, This thought that nothing, uh, that everything arrives from the same matter, that there's infinite richness possible, but it's you know up to the circumstances and 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 us basically also to allow that to happen, to help that um, emerge. It doesn't always uh, do so. So you could have a very barren society with, with the same people there. And you could also have a very rich society with the same people in the room, let's say. And uh, the the infinite of this imminence, it it sounds a bit woozy, but but to me it's very concrete. It's like, you know, like in rehearsal that you don't know yet what is what is going to come out of this material. It's still infinitely potent, and you work, and something concrete comes out because of your work you make it specific and you uh, you shape it but still it's carrying all this uh, uh, potence and I think that is with our work now and our talks and the networks it's um, it's very much working with this with this imminent allowing to emerge a certain richness from uh, from us little Little individuals scattered over uh, over Europe and and further on. Um, and I really salute uh, salute your initiative. Cheers for fears. I love the name also. <laughs> I was in the eighties a big fan of Tears for Fears. Uh, yeah. Told told Simon. <laughs> uh, yeah, I really yeah. feel understood by you. That's really great. Yeah, I think there will be many 
uh, seen that uh, as it really see it's uh, it's going to going to roll out. You know, uh, Simon and me we had the village this weekend uh, this week, and uh, we asked everyone for their future plans, and I think almost sixty uh, percent said, "I want to make a." a collective center I want to make a residency center I want to make so that everyone can uh, uh, can come and work it, it was quite uh, quite amazing to to feel and hear this hunger for let's do this thing together you know let's make this uh, uh, let's make 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 it uh, how do you say thrive Well, my voice is gone, right. guys. Yeah. And it's 10 to 10. Oh, my yeah. God. And yeah. Yasha, Yasha and me, we already said we still have to send an application. <laughs> Independent oh. theater. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Woo um, and uh, as Mariah was telling me that I have something to do with philosophy, what do you mean with philosophy? But I will quote a philosopher that be, that because I'm thinking about cold networks and warm networks and I found it very beautiful that you were starting with vulnerability and then you said something about the magicians so it's not so really it's not really rationally planable and yeah we were speaking about it all the time it has to have a certain certain something to it uh, great and there's a, a quote by adorno that uh, you are loved so it's also about love maybe you you are loved there where you may show yourself weak without provoking strength. And uh, that is, of course, not so normal. Normally, we show ourselves weak and we are, are encountered with strength. That's why we also have to have strength some, sometimes or a lot of times. But there where, where you can show a little bit of your vulnerability or that you're vulnerable, that's a special thing. <laughs> Okay, so thanks very much. This was the episode 27 of The White Room. You can support us most preferably by commenting, sending us critical comments or nice comments and uh, also <laughs> uh, recommending it to other people and uh, subscribing to it because we are going on with this rhythm. And actually, Mariah, I will, I don't know, maybe I will surprise you because I would like to do it every week. I want to have more guests. Oh. All right. Okay, let's, let's see. Maybe maybe it's you can alternate with the German version. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No. Okay. It's not a bad idea. Thank maybe. Yeah. Thanks for being here and uh, for sharing this and see you next time. Okay? See you. Ciao. See you next time. Ciao.